Hello, this is Steve Rinker from the Rinker Law Firm, and today we're going to talk about cross complaints and what are they. As I discussed on a previous video blog, a complaint is the document that the plaintiff files with the court to initiate the lawsuit. In the complaint, the plaintiff names themselves or the corporation as well as the defendants. Now, after the complaint is served on the defendants, the defendants may file their own lawsuit in the same matter. <clears throat> and so you have what's called a compulsory cross complaint in which the defendants will sue the plaintiff or sue co-defendants for their own lawsuit arising out of the circumstances and occurrences in the underlying complaint. So you may have plaintiff versus defendant and then a cross complaint, it'll say cross complainant, which would be the plaintiff in the cross complaint. And then it would name the plaintiff as well as other parties. <laughs> it can get quite confusing because you could have multiple parties bringing multiple lawsuits in one lawsuit. So what you have is the cross complaint, which is the second lawsuit within a lawsuit. Now, what the court does is they want to have all issues resolved in one lawsuit. They don't want somebody to bring one lawsuit, have that resolved, then the defendant brings another lawsuit later on against the plaintiff. No, the court wants it all done at the same time. Now, by the name of a compulsory cross complaint, it would appear that it would have to be brought at the same time that the defendant files an answer to the complaint. Or, in other words, when they first make an appearance after being served with the complaint. But that's not necessarily true. The defendant can always bring a cross complaint later on during the lawsuit. They will have to bring a motion before the court seeking the court's permission to bring the cross complaint. Whereas if the cross complaint is filed immediately upon the same time they're filing their answer, you don't need the court's permission. Now, with respect to the statute of limitations, once the plaintiff files a lawsuit, any statutory of limitation arguments the plaintiff may have against the defendant in a cross complaint are waived. Because once the plaintiff files the lawsuit, the statute of limitations is told as to the defendants with respect to any cross complaint actions those defendants may have against the plaintiff. Keep in mind though, the statute of limitations does not toll if the defendant brings a cross complaint against a third party or uh, fellow co-defendants. It only, it only stays or tolls as the language is called against the plaintiff. So. If you have a situation where the plaintiff sues the defendant uh, and let's say two years passed since the time uh, that the lawsuit was filed and then the defendant brings a cross complaint against the plaintiff for let's say negligence which has a two-year statute of limitations and the occurrence occurred more than two years ago that doesn't matter because the statute of limitations was told assuming the complaint was timely filed uh, when the plaintiff filed the complaint. Now, if the defendant also names uh, the co-defendants or a third party who was not named in the original lawsuit as a cross-defendant or a defendant in the cross-complaint uh, and the negligent act occurred more than two years ago, well, the cross-complainant would not be able to sue these new parties that are named as cross-defendants. Only the plaintiff would be liable or, or their statute of limitations argument would not uh, bar the lawsuit by the cross complainant against the cross defendant slash plaintiff. So it can get, <laughs> it can get confusing, uh, but also note that when the cross complaint is filed and the other parties are named or are sued, uh, the cross complainant, which is the plaintiff in the cross action, as you probably can gather, is required to go and file uh, the cross complaint as well as have these parties served. <clears throat> and this is either by personal service if they're new parties. Now, if there are parties that are in the underlying lawsuit, then the cross complainant can just mail serve these cross defendants with the cross complaint. 
Um, and then you also have what are called permissive cross complaints. Now a permissive cross complaint is different because a compulsory cross complaint is a cross complaint that arises out of the uh, accident occurrences alleged in the original complaint. With a permissive cross complaint, the lawsuit is based on something unrelated to the <laughs> underlying lawsuit. So let's say uh, you get in a car accident and so uh, the injured driver or passenger sues the driver that's at fault and then uh, but then the uh, driver that's being sued files a cross complaint against the injured party for let's say defamation for some unrelated statements not related to the accident just some unrelated statements now that would be a permissive cross complaint because even though the cross complaint does not arise out of the car accident it's against the party that the defendant is being sued by. So the court, again, they would rather resolve everything in the most expeditious and efficient manner. Even, so even though the defamation action doesn't arise out of the car accident, the court is going to allow this permissive cross complaint because it's just more judicially expeditious and resourceful to have both these actions, since they involve the same parties, be heard at the same time and get the matters resolved at one time. So that's what a permissive cross complaint is. And those are the two types of cross complaints uh, that we have here in the state of California. If you have any more questions regarding cross complaints, or if you've been sued and you want to find out if you have a basis to file a cross complaint against another party, please reach out to the Rinka Law Firm and me, Stephen Rinka, at 310-556-9653. Thank you.